All right, let's start with rational functions. Now, rational functions are not usually where I would start when I'm teaching something, but um, because they have an important issue with the domain and important issues with the range, I figure you'll get the most understanding uh, at, at a beginning if I start with rational functions. Okay. So the first thing I want to say about rational functions is, like I said, they are continuous. Generally, they are continuous. However, they are not continuous over, well, they're usually not continuous over uh, the entire interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. Some of them are, but many of them, or should I, I probably can't say most of them, many of them are not continuous from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we're going to talk about what number needs to be left out or what numbers need to be left out of the domain. So uh, a special note here, we're actually not going to talk about the range of rational functions in this lesson because the, dom or the range of a, of a rational function is really so special, it probably requires its own whole lesson just to understand the range of rational functions. So all we're going to talk about in this particular video is we're going to talk about the domain of rational functions. Now when we say domain, you may want to write this down, here's what we mean. Domain, the domain of a function is the set or interval, is the set, we're going to say interval, of, let's call them legal, legal meaning they don't break the rules, legal input values, okay? They do not, so any number in the domain, those numbers, they do not break the rules of math, okay? The rules of math. Well, what do you mean by the rules of math? Well, some of them that are relevant, there are a lot of rules in math, okay? Uh, like when you're solving an equation, you have, to do this, you, know, you have to do the same operation to the right side of the equation as you do to the left side. Uh, and sometimes you have to do it on the same side of the expression uh, whenever you do it. So there are a lot of rules of math. But a couple of them that are important today when talking about domain and range, uh, if you want to write these down, uh, one rule, okay, so rules of math, I'm just going to put rules. One rule is uh, you can't divide by zero. You can't divide by zero. So you can never, never cause a situation where the denominator of a fraction is equal to zero. And that's what we're dealing with here. Because we have a fraction, a rational function is a fractional function, and it has an, a variable in the denominator. If there's a number that we can put in for x that would cause the denominator to equal 0, then that would break a rule of math because we can't divide by 0. Another important rule of math to understand is that, um, is that square root, you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So can't take square root of a negative. Okay. So you can't take the square root of a negative, okay? And then another rule of math is that absolute values, absolute value is always positive. It's always positive, okay? So these are three really important rules of math that are relevant to understanding domain and range. So you may want to write these down. I'm going to refer to them throughout these videos, okay? And so, the one we want right now is the first rule is you can't divide by zero. So we want to know what numbers can I plug in for x here? And here's typically what I want to ask. Can I plug in negative numbers? Like, can I plug in numbers that are, that are moving toward negative infinity? Then I want to ask, can I plug in numbers that are close to positive infinity, like a billion? That's not really close to positive infinity, but I mean, you get the idea. They're big, big positive numbers. And then the third question is, can I plug in zero? And then the last question is, well, is there some way of knowing that there's a number that I can't plug in? 
And so when I look at this, first of all, the numerator, I can plug anything into the numerator because numerators can equal anything. A numerator can equal bit, you know, negative 5 billion. A numerator can equal 5 billion. And a numerator can also be 0. So we can have like 0 over 5. That just equals 0. So a numerator has you know, basically no restrictions in and, of its, in and of itself being a numerator, okay? So we can plug anything in, in here because it's, it's, well, we'll talk about the fact that it's linear later, okay? But this denominator right here cannot equal zero. That's a rule of math. And so, you know, can I, can I have a big negative number? Sure, denominators can be negative 10 billion. Denominators can be positive 10 billion. Denominators, however, cannot be zero. But can I plug zero in here? Well, if I put zero in for x, two times zero is zero. Zero minus seven is negative seven. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay for the denominator to be negative seven. It just can't be zero. So here's how we identify the domain of a rational function. We take the denominator, two x minus seven. We set it not equal to zero. So instead of setting it equal to zero, we set it not equal to zero because the denominator is not allowed to be zero. So we say denominator not equal to zero, and then we solve it like an equation. Add seven, add seven, cancel, right? Bring down the 2x, bring, at, bring down the not equal, zero plus seven is seven. So 2x cannot be equal to seven. Now we'll divide by two. Okay, and we get x cannot be equal to 7 over 2. All right, well, this is, this is going to tell us about the domain. This is telling us that the domain, or excuse me, that, that the denominator, that x, x can be any value as long as it's not 7 over 2. So it can be a number larger than 7 over 2 all the way up to infinity, and it can be a number smaller than 7 over 2 all the way down to negative infinity. It just can't be 7 over 2. And so here's how we write that. We would say negative infinity up to 7 over 2, but not including 7 over 2. Union, parenthesis, 7 over 2. So now not including 7 over 2 up to infinity. And I've already shown you something that looks like this in the last video. What this is saying is that the domain of this function is every number between negative and infinity and infinity. So that's every number, but not 7 over 2. And that's how we do the domain of a rational function. Let's do just a couple of examples. All right, so look at this example. All it's asking is, what is the domain of the function f of x, which is 5 over x plus 3? Okay, so uh, we see that it's a rational function. It's a fraction. It has an x in the denominator. I know the denominator cannot equal 0, so I'm just going to write the denominator, x plus 3, and I'm going to say that it's not equal to 0 because it can't equal 0. I'm going to solve for x. Subtract 3, subtract 3. This cancels. I bring down the x. x cannot equal to 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and that's my answer. x cannot be equal to negative 3. That means that x can be equal to all the other numbers. Okay, and so the domain of this function right here, I'm going to put a D with a colon and I'm going to do an interval starting at negative infinity because any number going in the direction of negative infinity can be plugged in for X, comma, go all the way up to negative 3 because negative 3 cannot be plugged in because X cannot be negative 3. Then I'm going to union, then I'm going to parenthesis and start back up at negative 3. So I'm going up to negative 3, I'm stepping over negative 3, and then I'm going to infinity. So I'm including every number except negative 3. Here we go, negative 2, or sorry, negative, two, negative 5, negative 4, oh, there's negative 3. Step over negative 3, and then going up to infinity. And so negative 3 up to infinity, and that's the domain of this rational function. Let's do one more example. All right, this one says, what is the domain of f of x is 5 over x squared minus 81? Okay, well, we have a quadratic now in the denominator, and so it can either, it either doesn't have any zeros, that's good news. If it doesn't have any zeros, then, then we can just say negative infinity to positive infinity. Or it has one zero, uh, if the discriminant is equal to zero, or it has two zeros. This one has two zeros, and I can show you. So we're going to take the denominator, which is x squared minus 81. We're going to set it not equal to zero. 
This is factorable. And so this becomes x plus 9 times x minus 9 not equal to 0. And so if, if this was 0, it would make the whole thing 0. If this was 0, it would make the whole thing 0. Therefore, neither one of these is allowed to be 0. So this now, I now have x plus 9 cannot equal 0, and x minus 9 cannot equal 0. Over here, I'm going to solve minus 9 from both sides, and I get x cannot be negative 9. Over here, I add 9 to both sides, and I get x cannot be positive 9. So now I actually have two numbers that x cannot be. x cannot be negative 9, and x cannot be positive 9. Here, I'll prove it to you. Negative 9 times negative 9 is 81. 81 minus 81 is 0. Not okay. Positive 9. Positive 9 times positive 9, because it's squared, is 81 minus 81 is 0, and that's not okay. All right, well then how are we going to write the domain on this? Well, I'll write it over here. It's a little longer. Or I'll write it up here. We're going to start at negative infinity, and we're going to go up to whichever one of these is smaller, because we have two. We have to put them in order. Negative 9 is smaller than 9. So we're going to go all the way up to negative 9, and we're going to skip over 9. Here's how we skip over a number. We do the number, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, the number. That's how we skip over a number. Then we would go up to infinity, but we also have to skip over positive 9. So we're going to put a positive 9, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, 9. Skipping over 9, and then making our way up to infinity, and we're done. And this is the domain of this rational function.